I can't um, convey to you how uh, profound uh, the Dharma is. And we've been actually studying our study group, our lineage, uh, the transmission of light by Kazan. And uh, Kazan uh, was like the mother. This is in, in reference to Mother's Day last week. The mother is the birth, of, gives birth to the Buddha. The mother. Uh, Dogen was more like the father, the absolute. The mom was the relative. And uh, without a mom, we can't do anything. It's true. The, because the mom gave us the love, the nurturing, the kindness, the gentleness, you know. And, and you know, like, <laughs> on the news it says, like, uh, there's no more baby food. But what did they do in the old days? Just think about it. Gerber's wasn't around. What did they do? How did babies exist? You know, technology has completely put the wool over our eyes that technology is scientific and it's true. But how did people survive in the past? You know what we did? We chewed the food and we fed the baby mouth to mouth. I mean, that's intimate. Of course, if the food was really good, you would swallow it yourself. <laughs> we could give the baby a little bit less and the baby was usually breastfeed, fed, huh? But you know, um, the technology is good. You know, I had a bridge put in my mouth and, and a root canal and boy, that was great. But technology is technology, tradition. Uh, we should re revere because that's how we exist today from tradition. So, um, yeah, I can't, I can't say how happy I am to uh, talk about uh, our lineage. The, it's the record of the transmission of light. And so, I didn't really prepare for this talk because this this book this book is the total summation of the Dharma and how and how you realize yourself because they're telling us how. Um, I read this book years ago and I didn't understand anything, but now I'm beginning to understand. And and as uh, practitioners, with sitting, you have to do it with sitting physical and mental sitting for, for as long as it takes you to begin to understand this. So I, I just started, uh, I'm just skipping around. I didn't have to prepare for this talk very much because there's so much in this book. So like echo, and I noticed in this transformation of light, uh, they didn't spend uh, much time about uh, he severed his arm to uh, have the Buddha give teachings. And in those days, uh, that was a kind of sacrifice. Nowadays, uh, soldiers don't know it, but that's the kind of sacrifice they're making. They're giving up their lives for the country, but they don't realize that until they get into battle or when the sergeant starts yelling at you, shape up or do this, don't do that. They don't realize that they're actually in the battle. You know, huh? don't we, we should try to get it before we go into battle. But anyway, um, I remember the Asansani, before they gave a talk, they would hold up their, the stick and then begin the Dharma talk. This is not a talk to be understood by your ears. Okay, so I just skip around. This is Eko. Eko, uh, well, he was the successor of Bodhidharma for eight years. 
So one time, Eko asked Bodhidharma, can the seal of the Buddha Dharma be had by hearing? In other words, can, can you hear the truth? Can we hear the truth of the Dharma? And Bodhidharma said, the seal of the Buddha Dharma cannot be acquired through hearing. Because you're programmed how you, you, you hear. You're programmed and conditioned. You like to hear something. In fact, I was thinking that students these days, they like to hear about Zen and they like to hear the philosophical, the profundity of Zen. And they love to talk about Zen, but they do not like to practice. You, 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 can't, you can't get it through your ears. You have to decondition what's been conditioned through you and your parents and the tradition, the culture and the education system. You have to, we are swimming against the current. We're not going with the current. I don't wanna, Dylan, I don't wanna work in Maggie's farm anymore. We're going the other way because it's, it's just suffering. You end up suffering. You don't gain anything. So he says, yeah, uh, Bodhidharma, um, it's kind of uh, interesting when I read this because Bodhidharma has a voice. <laughs> I just see this, this uh, old, he was over a hundred, I think, sitting in his cave. And when he came to China, uh, he, of course he met Emperor Wu. And um, well, it took him a long time to go to China. He could have died on the voyage. Um, even people before uh, people came to America from Japan or, or Asia, they had to take a boat. A boat. There's no airplanes then. But anyway, they he took a boat uh, because it was one of his teacher's wishes for him to go to China. So at, at the risk of his life, uh, he sailed on a boat. I don't know how long it took him. And so once a Bodhidharma says, when you still all conditions, when you uh, put to peace all conditions, that's hearing, seeing, thinking, is it possible? It must be possible, because how could the Dharma survive? So this is just once, Bodhidharma, when you still all conditions externally, that's the objective world. You're not emotionally attached to it, okay? The external world is not uh, controlling you. The market is not controlling you. Your iPhone computer is not controlling you. You are the boss. So, so when is so when that condition sets in, there's no more grasping. Grasping means taking, taking, I getting, wanting. That's grasping. There's no more grasping because we're not controlled by the external world, the objective world, by the mind internally, and the mind becomes like a wall. Then you will enter the way. Even though uh, Eko Daiosho often spoke about the mind and, he, and our essential nature, our, our true nature, who you really are, not who you think you are. Please, then who are we, huh? Not who you think you are, not even your Dharma name, your birth name, your essential nature. He did not become one with the truth. This is Eko. And he, he practiced a long time and practiced hard. He even severed his arm. Uh, in those days, people did things like that. 
you remember uh, the Japanese Jakarta tales the, uh, the hungry tiger uh, so the, the person would jump off the side and feed himself to the hungry tiger uh, uh, the medicine Buddha uh, immolated himself in front of Buddha uh, in in you know in Vietnam I forgot the the uh, chick uh, the Roshi's name but he emulated himself but you know those are it's not suicide it's a uh, an ancient practice where you give everything to the dharma So the great master who was Bodhidharma just checked uh, Eko's errors without speaking of the substance of mind, which is no thought, no thinking. This, this is a really important, no thinking. non-arising formlessness is not emptiness not nothingness but non-arising Yeah, my talk should probably end right here. <laughs> yeah. I, and that's pretty fantastic. Formless is not nothingness. It's not emptiness. It's non-arising. Nothing comes up, but you're still vividly, vividly alive. I remember uh, CTR, Chogim Trumpa Rinpoche. Uh, he gave a talk in Berkeley and he was sitting on a platform and he was smoking a cigarette and we waited for him to give the talk but he was just just smoking a cigarette that's all he was doing but we we didn't know actually it was the transmission of someone in the dharma smoking a cigarette oh that's bad you shouldn't be smoking it you should have a short life it was <laughs> a great ancestor sitting in front of a couple of hundred people smoking a cigarette, but we didn't get it. We didn't know that was the transmission of silence. What, what do you call it? Uh, silence is uh, ko, den ko. Den, tra, den is transmission and silence, moku, moku den. Moku den, silent transmission. And that was what Suzuki Roshi did all the time, but I didn't understand. People ask me, well, what was his character? What made him special? And all I could say is that he was a calm person and he was nice. <laughs> and he didn't, uh, he didn't make judgment on me. But that's just the surface of the iceberg. It's deeper, much deeper and profound. And this is not to be found in teachers, but in within yourself. This is Buddha's whole purpose. non-arising that's something that's really great okay okay uh, this is see that it's it's uh each ancestor in this is represented in the case they have a case circumstance the taisho or yeah the circumstance in the taisho about it and in the verse, and the, the last, the verse of it, be in a realm that is empty and bright, conditions and thought are exhausted. It is clear, alert, and ever so bright. That's it. You, you know, like in uh, 
the design of a session, seven day session is to exhaust your mind. Um, other people do it in other ways, but for different purposes. You, you go on a, a, what was it, a 16 mile hike? And when you finish, you come back and you finish and you, your body and mind, especially your mind is exhausted. Of course, your body is too, but they are also harmonized because the thinking, the conditioned mind is not that active anymore. So at the end of that hike, you're, you're not saying, what should I philosophize? What should I think about today? It's just happy the way it is because the breath, the mind, the body are harmonized. That's it. Conditions and thought, our thinking mind, our discursive mind, that uh, its job is to be discursive, to have you listen to it. And you do, we all do. Why? Ask yourself, why do you listen to it? You like to suffer. You like to be entertained by suffering. That's, that's the bottom line because it has nothing good to tell you. I mean, I, I have to learn that myself. Okay, like this morning I got up and I could feel myself, I'm in a hurry. Why are you in a hurry? I'm hurried to get to somewhere. This is what you do every day. When are you going to stop doing that? Try it. You don't even have to look at your watch. You'll still be on time if you are where you are, but you're not there. So that's what happens. True, huh? Okay. Oh, that's so that's echo. Before uh, I try not to mark my study book, but uh, I, I saw Ujiyama Roshi, he marked all, in fact, he, he said he not only marked one book, he marked two or three books, the same book, and they're on his bookshelf. So I have all these, all these markers on it. So I don't feel so bad now. Okay. Ungo Dojo. This is, this is, uh, uh, he was the uh, disciple of Tozan, Tangshan, who's one of my favorite ancestors. So Ungo Dojo, 39th ancestor. Tozan asked him, what is your name? Ungo Doyo said, Tao Ying. Tongshan said, say it from the beyond. I mean, <laughs> say it from the absolute. You know, there's the absolute and there's the relative. What would you say your name is? From the absolute, huh? Could you say something? There's no absolute here. <laughs> anyway, I I I just love love this, and there's there's a reference to it. Two hundred six footnote. This is a Francis Cook's uh, translation. He was my Azumi Roshi's uh, student. No. Here's, here's the word in the footnote, number 2806, beyond is kojo, kojo. It's an ordinary term, and it means something like advancement, progress, improvement, and upper movement in general. Its opposite is koge. However, it's more or less a technical term in Zen. It means something like transcendence, going beyond the conditions. In this sense, it is often used by Dogen, for instance, to denote a continuing upward movement beyond any temporary state of awakening. 
So, so you have a realization, and uh, I've met some students that tell me they had realizations, but they have no upward movement. <laughs> they got stuck in their realization. This is, this is true, this is what happens. But I mean, whether you're a student of Zen or a basketball player, but you know, you, you reach a certain point, but you continue to go forward. You don't stay there. In fact, there's a, there's a, a beautiful Japanese term called Gokuro-sama. And uh, Nioi Oroshi, he was a authority on the transmission a uh, very uh, big man also. He just had finished a book in Japan and he actually happened to meet Suzuki Roshi on the platform in the train and they were passing each other. Suzuki Roshi knew he had worked very hard in translating uh, this book, but all he, all he said was hype and he passed. But uh, Nori Roshi, he said he could still remember that day because it was a Gokurusama. Congratulations. In America, we have congratulations. That's it. That, that's pretty dead. That's for that moment, that instant. But what happens afterwards? Afterwards, you keep going. So, so back to the footnote. You know, absolute and transcendence. And so the master asked him, tell me who you are from, from the standpoint of the beyond or the absolute truth. Who are you? And from this point of view, Tai Yang cannot say that his name is Tai Yang. That was his answer. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Maybe I put too many markers on this, but I don't know which is which anymore. <laughs> At the same time, maybe it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, 176 was the next footnote. I can't find it, but I'll read you the footnote anyway, because it's very interesting. And it has to deal with impermanency because everything is changing every second, every instant, as if we could stay at some point, but we can't because it's every time is this, it's this, 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 this. It, it's moving. And we were in that impermanency. In fact, people call and with the COVID and everything, people call it times of uncertainty, but they don't have no idea. It's we live in the world of impermanency. What has happened hundreds of years ago is happening again now. 
because we have not learned our lesson. But this is talking about the instant when things happen. And this is the freedom from impermanency. That instant returns to just what they are within that instant. Changeless. It's just that instant. It's changeless. It's my rather loose, Francis says, it's my rather loose translation of Ju H O I Hoi, Hoi, Ju Hoi, which is translated literally as abiding in the Dharma state. Abiding in the Dharma state. So you could say that each, each instant is a Dharma state. But we're conditioned not to see it and not to experience it. Dogen made the term famous in such essays as Genjo Koan, Uji, and similar texts. It means that anything, anything remains just what it is and does not decay or change just for that instant. Consequently, something appears is what it is for its duration and then disappears to, to be replaced by something else. Dogen says, for instance, that spring does not become summer. It is very interesting because we're always caught by this. Our spring will be summer, but we're not, we, we have no idea what spring is because we're, summer is coming. Spring is just spring. Then it is replaced by something different. Summer, life does not turn into death but remains life, but it's ultimately replaced by death. Each thing, each dharma, thus is never other than what it is. For that instant, although it has pre predecessors and others that follow it. See, maybe if you'd like to ask any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Or even someone on Zoom? Oh, huh? I have a question, oh, Mike. So the um spring does not become summer i think that's in the same passage when it says like firewood doesn't become ash it occurs to me that maybe that what's behind that has something to do with not being either or because the subtleties of going from spring to summer that the, the dharma state each moment yeah they, they kind of there's nuances and they cross it's not either or it's just right now yeah it's right now so 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 you have to be there right now that that's why there's discipline in well not just zen but discipline in zen you put your shoes together that means you were there when you come into zendo you enter the zendo with your left foot furthest away from the altar that means you were there you, you understand it's not discipline for no reason you're there that's the whole point but you have to be there to receive something that's as, as simple as that. You have to be where you are to receive something. And may, maybe that's, uh, you can't be self-centered also when you receive something, because that's not receiving. You have to be open to receive. 
Okay, yeah. Well, you there's change all the time. Everything changes. But I I get this thing that is there, whatever that is, it's it has an essence about it because it knows that things are changing. That would be that would be the formlessness, the uh the, would that be the transmission of life, would you say? Yeah, uh, maybe, uh, maybe not the transition, but that is the life. That is the moment. That is the instant. What do they say? The instant before the moment of the present. That's pretty exact, isn't it? <laughs> It's that eternal instant that happens when yeah, you're I, present. I, eternal instant, but I like what you said before that, but it 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 went like this in my head <laughs> really fast. Could you repeat what you said before you said the eternal instant? It's hard to catch, isn't it? I liked it though. I, I wish I could have recorded it. Maybe I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know, neither can I. <laughs> but, but, but maybe you got it. You, can, you can't, you can't yes. remember it. Something got it inside, because I'm excited about it. But at the same time, I feel, yeah. oh, that's it, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You know, uh, uh, the publishing company, this is the original cover of tra the transmission of light. But now when you look at the publishing company, I mean, this is, this is out of fashion. People don't like this anymore. The researchers will tell you, this is no good. <laughs> so they try to seduce you into making things look better. In fact, they don't even understand what the book is about. They understand how to sell something for profit. That's what they understand. And they're absolutely right because they, they want to make money by it. And we're for principle. They're for profit, we're for principle. And you've been in situations like this. It exists, the opposites. And the, the amazing thing about zazen practice is that those opposites come together during zazen and they dissolve each other. Those opposites, those dichotomies, the things you have difficult with, the good and the bad, the long and the short, they dissolve in zazen, but you are not conscious of it. See, I can explain it now. you are not conscious of it because you can't be conscious of it because it's not an object nor a thing, but you can realize it. So when those, uh, oh, in the, uh, in the Sando Kai, uh, the intimacy of the relative absolute, actually that, that title, oh, the, uh, San, San also means, uh, the kanji for San also means to, to die, like Doksan, to die. Are you, are you willing to die? No, but there, there is a death in studying Zen, right? That's, that's what the, the old, the self that you think you are has to die. So you can receive a great, the great self, that you actually are hiding from. So yeah, Sando is same, Kai 
is a uh, son of Kai. Kai is a, uh, how, how do you say Kai now? What's the, what's the definition of Kai? Sando Kai. Every circle? Circle? Meet. 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 Kai. Meet. Kai. Kai is what? Meet. 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 Coming to completion or or merging, something has to well die. Die is a simple word. Something has to die. Something has to change. You you cannot receive it unless you give up something. You cannot receive anything if you don't give up something. There's an expression I heard recently. I really like it. It's uh, nothing changes if nothing changes. You know. Okay. For stuck people like me, if you could. <laughs> See, it's good to be captured by these things and these words, but we, I mean, that's that's the surface. We have to let it really sink down that to the actual meaning that will change our attitude in our life. You know? I, I think Kai Kai is to merge. It's to merge, come together. But if you if you come together, then it's um, a big coming together is giving up. So it's you're giving yeah, Kai is also giving up. Yeah. So so you're Kai, giving up. Kai is to come together to merge. But it's when opposites merge and come together, then it's a death. But the death is then then the life of everything. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a completion, completion and also giving up, the merging. Yeah. It's an intimate, intimate death. It's an yeah. intimate completion. I'm, I've got a big mouth. <laughs> uh, is this the same person? Yes, it's me again. <laughs> you know, I think of what <laughs> I- <laughs> What's your name? Cynthia Blackstone. I think of water, okay, I think of water going through, and you might say it's pouring down, and I see like the past, it's gone, so it's past, then there's this coming of the water, which is like a future, and then there's this, the water that you actually see present, it makes it seem like there is no such thing as past, present, or future. What happened to the now? Because it's all one, one entity. I think of this, and this is really uh, too simple and too complex all at one time. But as far as for sinking in, uh, then I'd have to go deep inside the water to be part of the water instead of seeing the water, just go in the water and be the water. That's what this is almost uh, metaphorically like. It's very beautiful. My Something inside understands it and I'm going, wow. And yet when I bring in the thinking, it- Yeah, yeah, it yeah, that, it. yeah. That, that's a very uh, good metaphor, the water. And uh, yeah, we have to we have to become the water. But to become the water, we have to give up the idea of self, your idea of yourself. That, that's, the, that's the exchange or the, the accord or the harmony. There, there's no way that you can receive anything if you do not receive it. Because conditions are holding you back. Roshi, what, what is he 
<laughs> who, who is it? Can you identify yourself? Adela, what is Kikai? Good. What was that again? What, what means Kikai? Kai, Kikai. 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 Yeah. Ki Kai. Ki Kai. No. Ki. Ki. Ki Kai. Oh, Ki Kai. Ki Kai. Ki Kai is uh, Kai is ocean. Ki is uh, uh, essence. Ki Kai. The oceans of your vital essence. Ki Kai. Oh, 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 this this refers to Tan Den Kikai. Tan is the essence. Uh, den is your field of essence. And then Kikai exists within the field of essence. This is uh, located two fingers beneath the navel. That's your PowerPoint. One here, one here, and one here. When, when we do incense, actually, I forgot to do this for a long time. Suzuki Roshi used to always do with the burning tip right to the forehead and rotate it and maybe make a, a shin symbol. Okay, it's so that stimuli here. And then in her zazen, we're enshrining our tanden kikai with our mudra. So the, the tanden is two fingers beneath, beneath the navel in the kikai, the ocean of vital energy, the spirit is within the tanden. So you're sitting with your tanden kikai, breathing in and filling the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is considered your second heart. You fill, fill it up, and also you breathe through your lower back, the kidneys and the liver because your front has a back and you breathe through both places and then you will find where the mind dwells. Because when you start breathing that way, it diminishes your thinking process. Okay? Yes, thank you.